2023-CR9045W and 2022-CR10906W, State of Texas versus Adriana Harrison. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Anna Ochoa Nelson. Demi Callahan, defense. And are you Miss Adriana Harrison? Yes, ma'am. Have both parties received the PSI report state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense. And also the DDRF MIC report state and defense? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Are there any objections to the PSI report state? No. Defense? No, Your Honor. Any objections to the DDRF MIC report state? No. Defense? No, Your Honor. Any witnesses state? No, Judge. Defense? Any what? Witnesses? No, Your Honor. May I amplify regarding the, the PSI? There are two programs that she has successfully completed. One is recorded in the PSI Child Protection. The other is aggression, um, anger management. Anger management you know. All right. So in regards to this case, the state is recommending deferred adjudication. Apparently we are, Judge. So I, I don't understand. Just for completeness. No, no. I mean, why, why should I go along with the deferred adjudication? And the reason why I'm saying that is because... Uh, one, I'm not the person who took this plea, but she's on deferred adjudication for continuous violence against family. Yes, and sure. now we have an assault case and she had a previous motion to revoke and that was for a violent offense as well. So I don't understand why I should follow this plea. And I'm keeping an open mind about it. I just, I'm trying to figure out Yep, yep. I could understand if there were mental health issues or something else that was going on. So if y'all want to address that. Uh, judge, this offer um, and plea was entered by a different assistant district attorney. Um, at this point, I, I, I'm bound to honor that. I don't know if Mr. Callahan wants to address your concerns himself. Your Honor, Ms. Harrison does not recognize that she has a major mental illness problem that she's been examined for it. The complainant in this case wants her to get probation, deferred adjudication, but she wants her to stay away from her. They get into fights, so that's the, that problem should be avoided. She has the support of her mother's in the back of the courtroom. Raise your hand. Right. And that's where she would live. Um, he has expressed to me that her method of handling problems is poor, bad. She wants to change it in her own self rehabilitative efforts at the two programs indicate that. You can trust her. I asked the court to go along with the case. May I address the court further? Yes. Harrison would like to speak to you, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, I just want to say I'm sorry for my actions. Uh, I was just trying to get my daughter back from the situation. I don't want to be back in here. I've uh, been taking parenting classes. I was supposed to get my parenting class. Perfect to be um, tomorrow. I said I'm going to it today. Um, I know I got CPS class, so I have to take if you do this me to get my daughter back. I just, I'm just trying to write my wrong and do better for my daughter. All right, probation? Yes, Judge. Anything to say on this matter? All right, I will be back to what Ms. Erson had to say. Um, she wants to get out to get her child back, and she promises to do better. Your Honor, I would say, as the court noted before, um, this is not the first MTR for a violent offense. And with the three new cases, the probation department is um, recommending revocation. All right. Um, it, it appears that she has not completed the BIPP class, her parenting class. Let's see. Oh, just one second. And I do not have on here, I would have to look in the system of any um, 
few ways that she's completed. I don't see that she's paid anything toward her fees or fines as well. All right. So, Ms. Harrison, you may want to speak to your attorney. I'm not going to follow this plea bargain agreement. It's rare that I don't follow plea bargain agreements, but I'm not going to follow this plea bargain agreement. Now, I understand that probably, and I'm making an assumption, I understand that probably you entered the plea um, to the deferred and then entered a plea on the motion to revoke, thinking that the court would probably grant your deferred and therefore not revoke you on the other. If that was the assumption you had, if you've made a plea and the motion to revoke, I'll allow her to withdraw that plea and it can be set for a contested hearing. We withdraw, Your Honor. All right. So I'm going to uh, allow them to withdraw their plea to any allegations in the motion to revoke and we'll set the motion to revoke for a contested hearing. And then whatever you all choose to do on the new case, you're more than welcome to do it. How much time do you need, Mr. Callahan? At the court's convenience, Your Honor. All right. State for a contested hearing? Um, two to three weeks, Judge. All right, Ms. Ferguson, can you recall this back for a contested hearing? State of Texas versus Rolando Valadez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Thank you, Wilkins, for the state, Your Honor. Defense? Kelly Hiddle. And are you Mr. Rolando Valadez? Yes. All right. Are both parties in receipt of the TAP evaluation state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes. Any objection uh, to the TAP evaluation state? No, Your Honor. Defense? No. All right. According to the plea bargain you entered, punishment is to be assessed at nine years in the prison. Uh, the state is recommending community supervision. Is there anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? No, Judge. We just ask that you follow the recommendation. And uh, Mr. Valdez has not had any violations on his actual interlock. And once the court has ordered him to do the AA daily, he has been doing that and he's found that to be helpful. So. All right. All right, Mr. Valadez, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand. Uh, state your name for the record. Yes, state your name for the record. Yeah. Roll him like this. <laughs> no problem. So the TAP evaluation is recommending outpatient treatment. Do you think that would be helpful to you? Yes, ma'am. All right. And are you in agreement to doing the outpatient treatment? Yes, ma'am. And they want it to be intensive. Here's the thing. It's still outpatient treatment. It's just more intensive. The reason why they're asking that of you is because of your alcohol use and we're in felony court for alcohol use. Right. So that means that you're probably a person who cannot drink alcohol at all. Right. Some people can take one drink. They stop. They're done. Other people, they just continue to drink. So I'm going to order, even though you've been doing the sober meetings, which I appreciate, uh, I'm going to order the intensive outpatient treatment. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. So are you employed? Yes, ma'am. What do you do? I work for Texas Highway. Uh, we work for highways, mm -hmm. highway streets. Ah, yes. So are you all, all a part of cleaning streets or repairing? We, we do the builds them. Yeah. The what he builds them. Ah, yeah. We add more streets to it. Oh, are you building streets or is it the the freeways? Like the freeways. We're making more lanes. He's been working on 35 for 20 years, Judge. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know there was somebody who told me <laughs> that they have been working. Well, seeing work on the freeway yes, since they were a little boy. That was Judge Carruthers. And he's like, <laughs> they're still working on it. So I don't think they ever finish. I don't know what that is. Why is it in other countries people will work on a highway, like a highway gets destroyed. And then once the concrete or whatever materials they use have cured, it's like it's done. Why does it take so long here? The weather sometimes, but the material and the process of in and out. Because mm -hmm. the streets got to be open. So we yeah. need a lot of people directing the traffic. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of mistakes and stuff, wow. accidents. Oh, I don't think you should say so mistakes. It's, it's a lot of <laughs> like, you know, yeah. kind of things. Oh, wow. Well, yes. thank you very much. Was there any. Okay. Well, I hope people will slow down when they see you all working. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right. Then I'm going to follow your agreement. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sentence you to nine years in the prison, suspended and probated for nine years. 
We'll do intensive outpatient treatment with probation. Uh, if there's an issue with that in your, your job, because I know your work hours are probably either early in the morning or late at night, just make sure you stay in contact with probation and let them know. Okay. If, if you feel like there's an issue where you're missing work or you can't miss work because they're gonna fire you or something, let probation know. If you feel like they're not able to help you, you can always come back to the court or call your attorney and you can come back to the court. You understand? Yes, All right, there's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Ignition interlock, that's for the full term. Uh, and I just noticed that was outside the agreement, Mr. Pittle. Right, Judge. We were asking that it be for half the term and then be evaluated by the court to see how he was uh, how he was doing. All right, I'm gonna put it for full term, but I've noted it on the docket sheet that that can be evaluated. So after the half term of this, uh, if there are no issues, more likely than not, I'll have it removed, all right? Ms. Becker, so uh, just come back to the court at half the term. Probation, at half the term for ignition interlock, uh, we can see how he's doing. I'm gonna order full term for now, but that's open. All right, there's a $500 fine. That will be probated. Proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Okay. All right, so we can go off the record. So you work with highways, so you know a lot of times there's a lot of accidents, mm -hmm. and it's because people who are driving while intoxicated. And usually the person who's injured if there's an accident and somebody's driving intoxicated, it's not the intoxicated driver. It's usually their passenger or somebody else. So you cannot drink or drive. And because you're on probation, even at your own house, because I know the holidays are coming up. I know that there's New Year's, there's Christmas. People always want to drink alcohol, maybe, or drink champagne or something. Even at your own house, you are not allowed to drink alcohol while you're on probation. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Thank you. 2018 CR. All right, if you all could not talk behind the court reporter, please just move it towards the end. Court is calling 2018 CR 10107, State of Texas versus Priscilla Amaya. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Gearhan, Your Honor. Lorraine okay. Eastern for Ms. Amaya. And are you Ms. Amaya? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, I did. Are you saying Priscilla Amaya, who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2018 CR 10107 for the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one less than one gram on June 28, 2019 for a period of three years. Is that you? Yes, again. State? Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number five in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Priscilla Amaya and then in there failed to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of November, December, 2021 in violation of condition number five. How do you plead to that true or not true? Away from the remaining violating conditions, Your Honor. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number five, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number five? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find violation of condition number five true. Is there an agreement? Yes, there is, Your Honor. Yes. It is for adjudicate guilt, revoke the provision, and sentence the individual to 11 months in a state jail facility. No objection, Judge. That's our agreement. All right, Ms. Amaya, are you asking the court to follow that agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Are you waiving your right to appeal? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So what went wrong with you? To be honest with you, Your Honor, well, I relapsed and I didn't want to report. Um, I thought working was good enough, but my I didn't have my family intact, my kids all together. Um, they were disappointed in me, so they stopped talking to me. But now I'm sorry, can you speak up? Now I have my kids back in my life and I have my first grandbaby. So I see things different. Um I know I do need help, um, and I'm willing to take that help as an outpatient when I get out of Bear County Jail. Here's the thing. If you want to remain on deferred adjudication, 
I will let you remain on deferred adjudication, but you're going into inpatient treatment or either you're going to felony drug court. Now you say, oh, I wanna do my time. I will get out and I will take care of things and I will be clean and sober. Nine times out of 10, that's not gonna happen. You know why? Because you are looking at two years in the state jail facility and you couldn't do it. And you are a person who should not be around your grandchildren or your children because you don't have control of your addictions. You're using opiates, you need help. So if you want, here are your two choices. State and defense, they came up with their agreement. Here's your choice. One, you can be referred to felony drug court. If felony drug court accepts you, great. If they don't, you go into inpatient treatment. Or you can go to the state jail facility for 18 months. Either way, your life, the time is going to pass. Either it's gonna pass with you bettering yourself by taking care of your drug addictions, or either it's gonna pass with you marking days off the calendar, just doing your time at the state jail facility. So which do you prefer? 18 months at the state jail facility, or perhaps getting treatment for your drug addiction, being the type of grandmother that your grandchildren can be proud of and that your children can be proud of. It's completely up to you. Yes. May we have a minute, Your Honor? Yes. Maya, are you still discussing? We're ready, Your Honor. All right. So we're back on the record. In 2018, CR 10107, State of Texas versus Priscilla Amaya. So Ms. Amaya, have you had a chance to discuss things with your attorney? Yes, so which do you prefer? Your Honor, we're gonna take the state jail time, but we are requesting that the court, if the court has the ability to refer or recommend her to a therapeutic community there for drug treatment, uh, we are requesting that. All right, then the I, court- I think that will allow her to get some credit for her time at state jail. All right, is she waiving her right to appeal then or no? Yes, Your Honor. All right, uh, then the court will find you guilty. The court will grant the motion, sentence you to 18 months in the state jail facility, give you credit for any time served and the court will recommend the therapeutic community. Therapeutic community will not increase the amount of time that you're in custody, but I do not have the authority to have them place you in there. The only thing I can do is request and recommend it, but you're also gonna have to ask for it. You understand? Yes, sir. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, sir. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement. Well, not, not well, actually. She's waived her right to appeal. Okay, that's right. Yes. You're right. All right, thank you and you've waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. How old are you? I'm 40. All right, you're 40. You still have a lot of your life in front of you and you need to make a decision. And I know staying clean and sober is hard. And this is from somebody who's never done drugs, but I understand it's hard based upon my experience in different treatment courts and based upon the fact that I'm having a struggle giving up ice cream. And it's ice cream is not even as addicting as the drugs that you're taking. But if you don't stop, one or two things are gonna happen. Either you're gonna continue going in and out of the prison or either you may end up with a bad batch and you may end up overdosing. And I don't think you want your children or your grandchildren to read about you in the news where it's bodies found on whatever street it is. And then they finally identify it and it's you. You understand? But you're going to have to work for it. And when you get out, there are plenty of places that have free treatment for you. Okay. 
Yes, Your Honor. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you, Judge.